So in Chargers camp, I was able to spend some time with head coach Brandon Staley and offensive coordinator Kellen Moore. We watched film for a while, spent about an hour together, and got good insight into what is going to make their relationship, I believe, click with this team. Here's a little glimpse into my time together with those two. You know, him coming here, one of my big goals was to really free him up, almost like he's trying to do for Justin, you know, like you're trying to get him to play fast and to be free and, you know, to be on the attack is like, I wanted him to have that mentality as the play caller, you know, knowing that his head coach, like, hey, I want you to go. I want, I want you to push this thing as, as much as you can and knowing that, you know, we're going to do this thing together, but like, you know, for the first, you know, I, first time being with like a defensive coach per se, yeah. um, even though I'm not like that, I'm a quarterback, you know, <laughs> right. so I want him to know like, we're going to stretch this thing as much as we can yeah. and let's, let's try. And you're going to be involved. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and we've got a really good team, like our coordinators and then our analytics, you know, group up top, our game management guys, it's, we're a team. And so that was like him coming here and hearing how like our process is, I think it, it, I think it takes a lot of stress off the play caller because you know he's not having to do it all by himself. He's got the head coach, and he's got you know our, our two man crew. Do you feel that part of the job for you anyway is an advantage when you have? I, I guess there would be maybe there's a fine line between having people to help you and feeling a little bit like too many cooks are spoiling the broth how do you feel about <laughs> this year yeah yeah there's definitely uh you, you can recognize both sides of that that argument uh i think one of the things that's really good that we've emphasized is trying to create this nice clear path of communication i think from a game management standpoint it's been awesome like clear decisive like these are when the green lights are on these are when you know and then having that clear path so that then you can project it as you play the game that we're not having those discussions on, you know, third down or leading into fourth down. Like, are we? Are, what's our situation? How are we going to play this out? Like, it's pretty clear at the beginning. Like, these are our go zones. These are our zones that we're. we're uh, Can you we're give me one example of something that is a bit of a hard and fast rule that that you guys agreed to? Maybe even on fourth down or whatever. Yeah, I think it's just knowing what that marker is on fourth down. You know, like, hey, it's green, you know, green being go, green at two, and being able to play out second and third down then differently based off of knowing that, hey. Green we, at two mean fourth and if two. If we get fourth and two, we're good. You know, yeah. we're going. and so No matter where you are in the field or? Depend, based off where we are in the field usually. Yeah. But, you know, once we cross that 50-yard line, let's say now, hey, we're in the green at two zone, it allows you to call second down like first down, third down like second down. And you, you How do you like up that? So much. It's been awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's been really, really good. How does Justin like it? He, he loves it. So, yeah. yeah. And I think that's that's the other part is just communicating with him, and that's been the really cool exercise of all this, you know, simulating game situations that we can we can work on those exercises of how do we go and communicate this, how are we going to get on the same page. And I think, like, one of the things, like, him coming from Dallas, too, and his experience as a player, a lot of things that are really important are timeouts at the end of half end of game. You know, how aggressive we're going to be in the timeout game. We try to... <laughs> stretch out the timeouts as much as we can in terms of saving them and so like hey we have two timeouts and there's a minute left okay when are we going to start using them you know assuming the clock's running and so going into the games knowing what our mindset is i think allows him to call plays in real time at a much higher level instead of him having to react yeah you know and so um again like taking you know how he's done things in the past how we've done because you know, I think we've done a really good job through our first two years. If you look at our end of half, you know, the kind of our game management metrics, we've been, you know, in the top five in the NFL in terms of head coaching, you know, metrics. And and then I think, you know, learning some things from him, you know, some things that we didn't think about enough and, and trying to, you know, team up to, again. Can you give me one example of something that Kellen has brought here that you is, have either adopted or you thinking about a lot i think that there's um a lot of you know end of game end of half type plays where you're kind of up against it and then just having some creative solutions to at least give yourselves a chance you know when it's not looking good yeah i think that some of the creativity from a personnel grouping standpoint from a formation standpoint that i know defensively would really challenge us 
uh, and it just gives you an opportunity to give Justin, you know, an opportunity, you know, to to push it and give us a chance to win. I think, you know, as you know, like all these games come down to the end, and I think if you have some of the solutions um, to give a great player like him a chance, and then you know, certainly we feel like we have the weapons where. If you can just give one of these guys a chance late in the game, yeah. even when the odds aren't great, knowing who we have, it's it's better because you know he's got some of these you know plays that I think that are um, that are you know cutting edge you know in those in those types of situations. Yeah. Okay, so can we just talk a little bit about working with Justin? What has it been like? Can you give me a couple of examples, maybe here, of what you've enjoyed working? with him so far yeah yeah okay. uh it's been an awesome transition uh i mean you're I always from, dealing from, with it with a dream guy in dak prescott yeah you yeah, know, yeah just a great guy what, what's always fun because this is obviously like my first chance to be uh, you know go through a transition of, of going somewhere different that that maybe we haven't gone before that you know when i was a player dak came into dallas so i've been yeah. with dak the entire time through all the different roles that i've been at so this is kind of your first chance to like, all right, we're gonna start fresh, we're gonna start clean, uh, we're gonna go for this. And so you see all the physical tools that Justin has from afar, you know? Yeah. And those certainly are pretty awesome, pretty exciting. And I think there's an element of, okay, once you start teaming up from a, you know, football intelligence standpoint, from a, you know, just big picture standpoint, how much can he handle and all that sort of stuff. And that's the stuff that's blowing me away is how much volume he can handle, how much communication. Like this is one thing is, you know, his Tell ability. Tell what, what he's what's he doing right so now? So he's simply, he's simply recognizing the defense is in a particular look, and he's like, hey, I'm going to go to this play instead. And so he recognizes, hey, I got man over here. I got access right here. I'm just going to go take this shot now. Yeah. You know? And so his, his what ability. What was he supposed to do on this play? We called, uh, I'm trying to think of what. The original play call was. I think it was Boy was it Boise? Yeah. Yeah. So so basically we're getting to the line of scrimmage and he has a toolbox of play calls based off the looks he gets. Yeah. And so really empowering him and that's part of the combination of, hey, I can call plays, but at the same time when you see something that you recognize and you have the answers and the tools, go for it. And yeah. that's been really fun to see him kind of grow in that role because uh, when he makes a decision like that, do you, are you there to, to right after this play, tell him whether that was the right decision or not? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you and do that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. After this particular one, do you remember what you said? Right call, good call, anything like that or what? Yeah, I was like, I, I can't remember exactly. <laughs> and, we're, and we're on the ball right here. Like, <laughs> so, Peter, what's really cool, like, I, yeah. like observing this was, because, you know, I think, What's been great for our defense and the people that have been with Justin for the first two years is he, seeing Justin take command at the line of scrimmage and then get to this type of checkmate type play where, hey, he does know the coverage. Yeah. And we find Keenan in the perfect play. And then for our sideline, for like the group over here to feel the command, okay, then we get a big play. And then now we're right on the ball and we're putting the pressure on the defense. And like for our offensive players, on both sides, defensive players, both sides to feel the command is has been like I think you know in terms of his growth and his process of becoming you know that special leader. I think all of us have just been really excited about the progress. And then yeah. you know what Kellen will do. Like what's been cool for me for the first time is like hey in the headset and because of these these types of situations where we're on the same team, where he can say hey great job bud. Great job, bud. Like, and then we're, you know, just like one of those. Yeah, quickie. You know, yeah, yep. quickie. It, it, yep. Great job, bud. And then now we're on the ball, and, you know, we're on the move, and, and he's and he's running the show. Yeah. Wow. And this is one of the fun parts is, like, we've utilized tempo, like, in Dallas when I was there. We utilized some no-huddle stuff, and, and certainly it's something I love. It's a toolbox. It's a part of your offense. It's not, you know, each and every time, like, you're not doing it all the time, but there's times where you – change the tempo and you want to go really fast sometimes you want to get back into more traditional shifts and motions and traditional alignments and you always don't know how how well they can handle this aspect of it you know just because there's a lot of communication that has to go on and so this has been a very fun process with justin just seeing his capacity to handle all this you know and you look at this throw yeah who's the receiver 
Mike. Mike. Mike Williams. Yeah. Jesus, that was a beautiful throw. <laughs> wow. And so, yeah. and this was something that he got to. Hey, Kellen, there aren't many people in the league who make a throw like that. <laughs> I don't I get mean, tired of it. It's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is awesome, man. But again, on Look the ball, trying to get to particular looks, you know. You know what's crazy about that throw? It looks like he's just lobbing it 10 yards down the field. <laughs> and what is that? That's 45 yards in the air. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeez. That's, that's wild. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah, but uh, that's been a really, really good process with it. And I think that's the biggest thing is everyone knows the physical tools, but to, for his capacity to, like, handle volume and handle just the ability to trust what he sees and execute the offense, you know, I think that's been the thing that I've really, really enjoyed is that. One other question about this, and then we'll move on. But what did you think of Justin Herbert before you got here, and how has your opinion of him, if at all, changed? Yeah, no, certainly you knew a lot about him. A lot of, you know, in this coaching profession, football profession, you know a lot of people who are associated with, you know, the both of us, and you saw the physicals. You knew that he was a really smart person and a smart player, and you knew all the background that you could, you know, research. Uh, but I think one of the most impressive things to me was the first day he went out there in OTAs, and this may sound, you know, very silly to the common person, but, you know, when you put in a new system and there's some different language and some things, the first day you put in play calls and he's hopping into the huddle after one time you telling him and he's just rolling these play calls off like it's nothing. You know, and I'm still like, there's some verbiage that's new to me. That how I'm long at. is the, give me an example of a play. Like, how, um, how long is it? Uh, ours aren't as wordy. We, we've tried to, yeah. like, simplify that a little bit. But, yeah. uh, you know, you can just look at that and, you know, give them some of those calls about, you know, uh, gun roy left, paint right, Boise H angle, and maybe there's a shift in motion associated with it. But he just rolls into the huddle. And I remember the first day, I'm used to calling every play. Usually I call it twice in yeah. the end of the headset just so they hear it the first time. And then sometimes there's like a loose end that they want to hear just one more time the second time. And the yeah. first the first day I called it one time, I start calling it and he kind of he kind of gave me one of those wave it off like, hey, I'm good, I'm good, let's let's roll, <laughs> you know. So it was kind of one of those like, all right, he's he can handle this stuff. This is impressive. So. Yeah. Uh, and the last thing about him, what kind of student is he? What kind of what kind of person studying his stuff is he? Do, do you find that he'll come in the next day and he'll know everything that you did the previous day and you were trying to get taught? Yes, it's really, really impressive. I think uh, his study habits, the detail and work that he puts in, he's always the first guy. If I have a little typo in, in a plate in the script in practice, he'll be the first guy to recognize it. You know, he'll come in the morning like, hey, wait a second now. Do you mean Y or do you mean F here? You know, I think this means F. Yeah, that was a typo. You got me on that one. Uh, but even like the last few days, I mean, how much time he spent just setting up his routine for in season? You know, uh, making sure even his uh, his iPad is all laid out so that his his notebooks ready so that he has uh, you know it all aligned for hey on first and second down I want my sheets to look like this when I take notes and on third downs I want the sheets to look like this and I want these cut ups. Uh, it's not just, hey, what the coaches hand over. You know, he, he yeah. has a plan of his own, and I think that's really cool. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.